It's hard to believe that anything as innocent as a church bazaar could have started so much trouble for the Convent Santanco. Actually, the bazaar itself was the most successful one we've ever had. But more importantly, it was there that we all met Santanco's new captain of police, Senor Fomento. The captain is going to be exactly what you think he's going to be, San Juan's answer to Inspector Clouseau. Veteran character actor Vito Scotti played him, and he'll become a semi-regular throughout the season. We've seen Mr. Scotty a couple of times. He had a bit part as a henchman in Batman, and he was Major Bonicelli in Hogan's Heroes, which of course may or may not exist among my reviews because CBS made me take them all down. If you're interested in seeing me start that back up, join my Patreon. I'll be creating some new reviews and posting them there in the near future. And I'm off on another tangent. Getting back on track, the captain is a stereotype, but all in all, he's a well-played stereotype. Let's check him out. Oh, Captain Fomento, are you enjoying yourself? Uh, yes, Reverend Mother. But the next time, I would suggest that you would apply for a police permit. Oh, is that necessary? No, but it won't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest, he sold that. Too often when inexperienced actors try to do a fall like that, they overplay it, roll around all over the ground, stuff goes flying, and it becomes less than believable. Here he just went down. He leaned on something that couldn't hold his weight and kerflump. Not overdone, not underdone. I have a feeling this is going to be good. Ahem. Oh, brother. Do you do realize that kerflump is not a genuine word. Well, speaking as a language specialist, since I just used it in a grammatically correct sentence, it is now. Oh, bother. Pleasure to see you. <laughs> Likewise. Um, I must congratulate you uh, on your winning the raffle. Um, I must confess that I had my eye on the the television set. I bought ten tickets. Oh, that was very generous of you, Captain. How many uh, did you buy? One. One? Imagine. <laughs> you buy one ticket and it is drawn. <laughs> but he's even more jealous, I mean suspicious, when he learns that Carlos was the one who donated the TV set in the first place. And he happened to win it. How very unusual. We all know what's coming next. Uh, are you suggesting, Captain, that it was anything... Uh, Crooked about this raffle? You said crooked, I didn't. Carlos is sufficiently insulted and so is the Reverend Mother. But the captain isn't finished. Sister, uh, excuse me. Um, you have had a, a very good fortune with this Wheel of Fortune, eh? Yes, we made 81.50. <laughs> no one could beat the wheel. I had to lose $25 to find that out. <laughs> and because he lost so much money, the wheel must be rigged and they're all under arrest. Take a guess where they got the wheel. Charity! The law does not recognize charity as a justification for illegal gambling. Oh, come on, Captain. Only a fool will lose more than one dollar to win a box of homemade fudge. Well, I was there. A fool lost $25. Carlos can't believe anybody would be that stupid, but before he can follow up, Sister Bertrill comes in. Do you often visit here? The sisters at the convent consider me to be a patron. Only last week he donated a, a workbench to stimulate interest in woodworking. Oh, that's good thinking, yes, very good thinking. You see, there's always a shortage of uh, carpenters uh, who can make handmade uh, hair wheels. And that's the only possible reason for the kids to learn woodworking, right? The captain is missing one simple but important fact. Carlos donates all this stuff because he wants to. Nobody guilts him. The sisters often don't even have to ask. He might visit them and notice that they need new benches in the courtyard. As quick as he can afford it, he donates them. This is what Carlos has become. He's still the playboy, gambler, and all the rest, but he's developed a heart for the sisters, and especially the little bitty ball of energy that has transformed his life so dramatically. The captain is like too many people. Life is a transaction. If I do something for you, there'd better be something in it for me. Altruism isn't in his vocabulary. Once upon a time, it wasn't in Carlos's vocabulary either. 
but he chose to embrace something that was staring him in the face. And you may notice that since Sister Bertrill came into his life, his smiles actually reach his eyes. He's happier than he's ever been. But I want you to know, I shall be watching you every step, closely. In fact, I shall be watching all of Santango, closely. <laughs> 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 he should have been watching that riding crop a little more closely. And by the way, why does he carry a riding crop? I suspect if he showed him a real horse, he wouldn't have any idea which end the riding crop goes in. Well, it's not that we don't appreciate what you've done for us, but the Reverend Mother feels perhaps you've done a little too much. Oh, I just got through explaining to Captain Fomento that nobody got hurt, except some fool that lost $25. Uh, who do you think that fool is? <laughs> no wonder he's playing Charlie Chan. I tell you, we have to get him off our backs. Oh, how? For there's only one way to cure a soul loser. Give him back his money. Carlos insists on providing the money since he can absorb the loss better than the sisters can. So take it to the captain, say, here's the money you lost on the wheel and we're sorry for any inconvenience. The captain is at the police station. When Captain Fomento reported his suspicions about the convent and the crooked wheel to his brother-in-law, Chief Galindo, the chief summed up his feelings in two words. Get out! Come in! Good afternoon, Chief. Sister Bertrill. Captain, uh, could I see you for a moment? Good. Now, do what I said, give it to him, say, here's the money you lost on the wheel, and everything's good. I wanted to give you this as a, a little something. We hope it will take care of things. This is torture. She really doesn't understand what that sounds like. Nice to see you again, Chief. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. What is it? The evidence that the bishop is skimming the poor box? Oh, laugh if you will, but this little envelope that was delivered to me by Sister Betrill is the inevitable bribe. You have to admit it sure sounded like it. She never got around to saying, this is your money and we're giving it back. Is the chief convinced? Momento, you're out of your mind, and if you pursue this any further, you will be out of a job! <laughs> Furthermore, Momento, take my advice. Forget about the underworld and stamp out the litter bug. <laughs> I'll take that as a no, he's not convinced. Fomento is on phone duty. That should keep him out of trouble. Nacio! Nacio! Another phone call for you. Oh, uh, thank you, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> Nacio seems to get a lot of calls. Neither the chief nor the captain seems interested in telling him no personal calls while he's on the job, and the captain knows that the convent needs a gardener. He orders Nacio to take that job and act as a spy for him. Thing is, he's getting just as many calls there as he gets at the police station. Hey, Burner. To watch me go. Daily double. <laughs> right. No, I have no uh, problem with the police station. I just uh, moved to a new location. Uh, tell the rest of the boys um, I'm at the convent of Santanco. Bless you for calling, Bernardo. That's right. He's a bookie. And as long as nobody tells him he can't receive calls here anymore, he's got a sweet setup. Nacio, do you have anything to report? Yes. Uh -huh. I've seen the sisters go in there. Where? There. And do a lot of whispering. That is the chapel, and they are praying. You stupid boys! <laughs> the spy setup isn't so sweet because that's as much as he can dig up on the sisters. They seem to be honest. Who knew? Fomento uses a bird call, something like a bobolink, to get Nacio's attention. Since Puerto Rico doesn't have bobolinks, Sister Bertrill would like to know what's making that sound. You have any more information? Information about what? Who is it? Captain, are you all right? Oh, yes. <laughs> information. Uh, wonderful. Uh, information about what? Well, um, you see, uh, 
Oh yes, the, the machine, <laughs> the yeah. auto club. Uh -huh. Well, I want information for when they would be arriving here. Yes. Meanwhile, Nasio has another call. Nobody can find him, so perhaps he's at the gardening shed. They'll look for him there. I wonder where he could be. Even money, he's at the racetrack. What makes you say that? Well, racing form. Why, look, he's in horses. Avidly. <laughs> if not professionally. That would explain all those phone calls from those relatives. Sister Bertrill figures that's why the captain has been snooping around. He's preparing to arrest Nasio. He'd better hurry. Why? Well, Nasio is committing the cardinal sin of bookmakers. He bets, too. And according to the horses he's picked here, he'll be out of business before the fifth race. In other words, he's great at handling other people's bets, but he himself knows squat about horses and is really bad at picking them. Sister Jacqueline seems to know a lot about it, which suggests something about her life before she was Sister Jacqueline. I don't know, it looks awfully complicated to me. Oh, no, it's not. No? Now, once you get the hang of it. Now, look, yeah. here's the first race. Yeah. Nasio has circled number four horse, King Saxon. So you think King Saxon doesn't have a chance? He's a goat. Oh. No, 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 no. The horse to beat in this race is Lover's Delight. Lover's Delight. Yes, he's got good breeding. By Baron Esty out of action, gal. Oh. Yeah, she's a Glen Spirit mare. Oh. Needless to say, the captain didn't hear the part about Nasio. And for all that he's a criminal, the sisters kind of like him and don't want to see him go bankrupt. So Sister Bertrill will fly over to the racetrack to try and warn him. Nasio, Nasio, my God, I found you. Sister? A sister shouldn't be on the racetrack. What would the Protestants say? Nasio, we came across your racing forms. All those phone calls, they weren't from your relatives. They were from people placing bets. Now admit it. They could still be my relatives. Nasio. I don't care who you are. When Sally Field looks at you like that, you tell the truth. She also ran into Carlos and told him to put all his money on Lover's Delight. She tells Nasio the same thing and explains Sister Jacqueline's reasoning. She also warns Nasio that Captain Flamento is on to him. Uh, good luck from all of us at the convent, Nasio. I'm putting every cent I got on Lover's Delight. You are. After what I just saw, I'd be crazy not to. Carlos sometimes forgets that not everybody is as used to that as he is. I am sure that all of you must have heard that a confession is good for the soul. And I am sure, Captain, that we are aware of the value of confession. But uh, just what would you have us confess to? You know, as well as I do, Reverend Mother, and I use the term loosely. What is it about me? Preserve us. A cop drags Carlos in and Fomento has the whole gang. He's got it all figured out. Now do you get the picture, Chief? The sister's working the comment, and he is the outside man. Well, I would say that I have a airtight case. I think there are a few punctures in your case, Captain. <laughs> now that all the ranting is out of the way, Reverend Mother has one simple question. What is going on? Nasio was using the convent to take bets, and the sisters found out. What? Our gardener was a a, a, a... a bookmaker. Bookmaker? Yes, Reverend Mother. He moved his operation to the convent from this police station. He was using the police station to take bets? Well, that's easy enough to fix. Just pick him up. Forget it, Captain. He's on his way to a gardening job in Las Vegas. I'm guessing Lover's Delight paid very well. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll be fine. He'll be back several more times and he'll still be a captain. Since the chief is married to the captain's sister, I suspect a fair bit of nagging went into that decision. Meanwhile, as I suspected, Lover's Delight paid very well. 50 to 1, according to Carlos. Nasio bet a little bit in the convent's name and Carlos is delighted to present the Reverend Mother with $500. It's enough to fix several things around the convent and get new desks for the children. Senor Ramirez, you must give this money to a worthy charity. I'll bet I know one. Reverend Mother, excuse me, but I, I, I think I know of a worthy charity. You do? 
Yes, uh, there's this convent that needs a new roof and a new boiler and new desk for the school kids. <laughs> well, uh, I, uh, I never thought of it quite that way. Uh, thank you, Senor Ramirez. And now so does she. Nacio gave it to Carlos, which means it's clean. Carlos gives it to the convent, and there you are. Jesus said to make use of unrighteous money, do something good with it, like fix all that stuff. Money is neutral. The whole thing about money is the root of all evil is both a misquote and a mistranslation. What destroys is love of money, which is to say greed. Money can buy a gun to kill someone. It can also buy a meal for a hungry child. It's all a question of what you do with it and what you do with it shows how important it is or isn't to you. This money wasn't gained by illegal means, but according to Catholic tradition, gambling is an immoral means. That's why the Reverend Mother felt she needed to decline it. But even if they hadn't come up with the charity angle to get around it, they had another way. It's only gambling if there's a risk of losing. According to Sister Jacqueline, Lover's Delight was a sure thing. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button to let me and YouTube know you want to see more. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the mask here and get signed up so you don't miss a thing because something is always happening here at Irving Zoo. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you later. They'll become a semi-regular throughout the season. I can say throughout. San Juan's answer to uh, good grief. And that's the <laughs> good grief. He's got a sweet setup. Doggone this thing. Fomento uses a bird called Fat at this. Did you get that bull back? I don't am. <clears throat> he wouldn't have any idea which end the riding crop goes in. Let's see how many people that grosses out. <laughs>